Hi, everyone. Hoping that you all are well. We're going to be continuing our discussion on the kingdom of Judah. And we're looking at this iteration of that kingdom name, which is X-W-E-D-A. We have looked at this before in an earlier analysis a few years back, but we are revisiting this because of some anomalies noted related to this kingdom and also these new histories that are emerging related to this kingdom. It's unclear what is reliable and what is valid at this point. Okay, so let's recap this Kingdom of Weta entry on the Wikipedia page. What you have here is this Kingdom of Weta with these purported various spellings of this word Weta. You also have J-U-D-A as one of the offerings. What's noteworthy about this is that that J-U-D-A, which we discussed a couple of years ago, is the Greek version of Judah. In other words, it's the Hellenized version of Judah, if that's what it is. What this means is, is for some strange reason, there is a Greek naming of this particular kingdom. You also have a dynamic where there's an assertion here that all of this is subsumed under Yoruba all of a sudden. Uh, all of this, the kingdom of Weta, it's all Yoruba now, according to this narrative. And so what you also have here is this offering that this X-W-E-D-A is the Yoruba spelling of this particular kingdom. But if you recall from our analysis a few years ago, this is not the Yoruba spelling of this particular word. This is coming from another language, and we're going to look at that. Now, before we look at this translation dynamic with respect to this XWEDA, we're just going to look at these subject headings according to the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress does not identify a kingdom of Judah. What it identifies is a former heading of Dahomey, and we're going to examine that also. We have a former heading of Dahomey, which is now subsumed under Benin. And then there is a list in terms of ethnology. There is a list of people groups that go under this umbrella. And what's noteworthy is you have, of course, the fawn. You also have this indication of Huida with the H-U-E-D-A. Now this is supposed to be the same as the X-W-E-D-A. And these are all identified as African people. So these are African people groups. However, you have two different people groups for Huida and Zwida or Zvida when they are supposed to be one people group. And then you have the Yoruba that is supposed to be the people group under which these two other people groups are subsumed. And so you have two distinct people groups with Huida and Zuida. Uh, and we're going to look at the Zuida, however. So starting off, we are looking at this XW combination and it is identified as detected for Kurdish. Now this particular dynamic, this X and W, comes with some complicated Betacism dynamics with that interchangeable B and V. What also is interchangeable is that V, W, and U. And so you have a number of dynamics going on here just with the X and the W. And you see that if you translate it into the Russian, you see XB versus XW. And this is tied into that Betacism dynamic because the XW can translate to XV, XU, and using Betacism, it can flip to being XB. 
And so you have a number of pronunciations that are possible with this entire situation here. And so what you see here is this is not Yoruba, unless, of course, the Yoruba are Kurdish. So what you see here is in the Kurdish, this word essentially, when you look in all of these different languages, it's translating to God across the board. So you see in the Dutch, God. You see in the English, God. You see the equivalent of God in the Latin and the French. Again, you see the equivalent of God. Yet again, in the Portuguese, you see the equivalent of God. And so there is significant consistency with respect to what this word is supposed to mean. It means God in Kurdish. And when you translate into all of these different languages, you have equivalents of God. You see it in the Igbo. And interestingly, of course, you see it in the Yoruba. And so you can see that this is not the Yoruba word. This is the Kurdish word. And when you look in the Yoruba, it's Olorun. You see it translating into the German as the equivalent of God. What's noteworthy here is when it translates into the Arabic, it translates very specifically as Allah. And so what you see with this XWEDA is that it is Kurdish. It is not Yoruba. Why it's being presented as Yoruba is unclear. You also see that this XWEDA is translating to God in a number of languages. It's not translating to JUDA or JUDAH or YEHUDA. It's translating to God. What is noteworthy, though, about all of these spellings is that they are all ending in the DA sound. And so there's the D-A or the D-A-H uh, in all of the, the variations that you have there. And so as we indicated previously, what is being communicated here is this kingdom of God dynamic. Where this is all coming from, however, is unclear. And the reason why it's unclear is because there is this inconsistency with respect to all of the spelling offerings, because these words that are spelled don't all mean the same thing. And so when you have Zwita or Zvita, it's translating to God. But when you have Ajuda, it's not translating to God. And so you have these different words that are translating to different things and the meanings are inconsistent. We need to round this out by looking at who the Kurdish people are, where they are actually located. As far as we know, they are not located on the west coast of Africa, unless, of course, the people on the west coast of Africa are actually the Kurdish people presenting as something other than what they are. So what we have here is the Kurdish people living in the area known as the Taurus Mountains of southeastern Anatolia. We've talked about Anatolia before, and there is a connection between the people on the west coast of Africa and some of the dynamics, historic dynamics of Anatolia. You also see that they are occupying a space in Iran and Iraq, so sort of this Iran, Iraq, Turkey area. Now, Turkey is very important for a number of reasons. Biblically, Turkey is significant, and we're going to look at that. But this is just something that you need to keep in mind because this is making no sense in terms of why you would have this kingdom name identified as XW. EDA and then the Yoruba being identified as the origin of this name when this is actually coming from the Kurdish language. And so there's no real explanation for why this would be the case. Now it is noted that the Kurdish identity is noted 
in records from Mesopotamia. That's important to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that this name Kurd seems to correlate with conversion of these tribes to Islam in the seventh century. And so as we wrap this up, in addition to this connection between Iraq, Iran, Turkey, and Dahomey, Benin, Yoruba, you have another dynamic going on with what are known as the Dahomey Amazons. The other name for the Dahomey Amazons is the Black Spartans. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.